I want to talk in particular about how I've grown on the issue of housing. When we moved to Belmont in 1992 with our young children, housing was a solved problem to us. I worried about traffic safety for my kids. I worried about the quality of schools. I generally was concerned about preserving the quality of life in Belmont. My first role was on the South Pleasant Street Land Use Committee, and we recommended against doing any housing development on South Pleasant Street, as I recall it, because members of the committee, and I went along with this, felt there was that would mean too much traffic. Um, and then as a member of the select board, I, my biggest issue for the first few years was opposing development of the McLean property. And I am glad that we saved woods and meadow there. But that was my concern. I wasn't thinking about building housing. Then on the select board and continuing as state representative, I fought to preserve the land at the uplands. As state representative, I pa pa passed legislation to, and D Governor Deval Patrick vetoed this, but the legislation would have had DCR purchase the property for park use. And I tried to weaken the 40B process by making land conservation a goal that would be cognizable in the 40B appeals process. I'm actually a little ashamed of my indifference to the to the issue when I first, uh, I remember I, I, was, I sat down with, when it was early in my state rep career, I sat down with Paul Guzzi, who was then head of the Boston Chamber of Commerce, and he talked about from a business perspective the need to build more housing. And people were leaving the state. And my reaction was kind of, well, you know, it's a free country. If they want to leave, that's fine. Um, when I became senator, though, I got exposed to, to new things, representing Watertown, representing Fenway, Alston, Brighton. In Fenway, they've got new 20-story buildings marching down Boylston Street, one after another. They're building housing everywhere, always increasing scale, always arousing opposition, but just doing it. Behind those 20-story buildings, little brownstones. In Brighton, in every neighborhood, four, five, six story buildings going up next to single family and, and two family units. In Watertown, there's been a bit more respect for zoning space, but there's been huge areas open for redevelopment, huge production of housing, and a huge increases in the community vitality. I came to appreciate the consequences of the different approaches, the political structures in the, in the communities. In Boston, you have a very strong mayor, and if, like the last few mayors, they want to build housing, they're going to build housing without, without any real consideration for local opposition. In Watertown, you have a strong manager who cannot act unilaterally, but who um, has the power to drive a strong planning agenda for development. And I came to understand how our form of government, our strong town meeting form of government, is by nature unlikely to achieve the same rapid production of housing. I get it. It's wonderful to have quiet streets at night. I love this community just the way it is. I understand the vision of a town of homes. Housing is a solved problem for those of us who are lucky enough to be here. But the other thing, that another thing that happened to me as I became a state senator, to my perspective, is I got exposed to people of all ages, but especially young people struggling to afford housing. I hear from them all the time. My district is about two-thirds renters. Rent increases, building conversions, constant turmoil. My own daughter had an apartment in Fenway for a little while. She had to move out to Brighton. She went through three different roommate groups in Brighton. She gave up and moved home. Then she moved up to Portland, Maine. And then she moved out even further in Maine to find housing that worked for her. And I'm no longer OK with the idea that 
let the young people leave. And let's not forget the seniors who have no cost-effective options for downsizing within this community. More broadly, loss of workers is an economic development issue, and it frustrates important public policy goals. We're not going to achieve our climate goals without expansion of the construction industry, from electricians to carpenters to HVAC workers. We need them all. We can't staff our hospitals. We can't care for our elderly and disabled. I work and hear from many disabled people who can't hire the home care that they're entitled to hire uh, and that they desperately need. Name the field, we're having trouble hiring. We just have to pick up the pace on housing construction statewide and we can't get it done in Boston and Cambridge and Watertown and Somerville alone, which they account for the majority of the housing production in the state. Every community has to welcome housing and do their share. And I honestly believe that some meaningful apartment production would be great for this community, which I do love. Lack of housing options contributes to transients and loss of community and connection in Belmont. Our kids can't live here. People who work here can't live here. People leave town when their kids get grown because they have no downsizing options in town. I've watched so many senior citizens, active people in the community, integrated into the community, just leave because there's no option within the community. The MBTA zoning proposal, which you will consider later this year, is an important step and I'm hopeful that after debate you will approve it. I think as of today, 80 communities have approved plans removing zoning barriers to housing. However, there are many other barriers to housing. Zoning is just the one that we can control. Interest rates. Until the Fed lets up, we're not going to build much housing. Labor. No labor, no housing. But hey, no housing, no labor. It's a tight cycle that we're going to have to try to break out of. Supply chain issues. And this is the one that never goes away, site assembly. There just aren't necessarily sites that are ready at any given time to build housing on, no matter how they're zoned. So that's why I hope that in years ahead, Belmont and the state as a whole will embrace even stronger liberalization of zoning to open up more sites. We just have to open a lot of sites so that some of them will work. So I can tell you that essentially all of my colleagues in the State House, and by the way, most legislators that I talk to in other urban states that have had the same sort of planning model with zoning that restricts housing, Everybody has housing at the top of their agenda. We're about to pass a $4 billion bond bill to support housing development, but it's going to be a drop in the bucket, a drop in the bucket of housing need. So we need to liberalize zoning much more broadly and free up the, the private sector to build more housing. It is, at this time, uh, my fondest public policy hope that together we'll find a way to build a lot more housing in this community and allow a lot more, give more people the opportunities to live here. Thank you very much.